that when, when was the last time you were on a team where you weren't the biggest and, and strongest guy right out the gate? Uh, I mean, probably a year ago now when I opted out. I mean, at Oregon, we had a couple big guys too. But yeah, to come up here and to see all the old linemen and uh, to see Skip, <laughs> how tall he was and uh, to stand next to him, it was uh, <laughs> humbling for my size. So, uh, but yeah. It's a great competition and uh, it drives me to do better. So, Coach Campbell was was saying that one of the important things this this week is for you because because you're not in pads, you're not you know getting the contact in, is is just seeing how the guys work and, and getting a familiar with being a professional. Um, has has there been any eye opening experiences to that in the the weight room or on the practice field that were um, different or more intense than maybe you expected? Um, as of right now. Uh, everything's been kind of easy. Uh, just kind of watching the older guys do what 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 it takes to prepare for practice and their process, and whether it's getting in a cold tub or hot tub before, or just kind of looking through the plays and the install before we go over as a team and in the old line room. So uh, I just kind of pick up the little things that they do and uh, try to see if it fits me and my personality and my process to where I can feel comfortable to do those things and go out and perform at the level I want to perform. So uh, just going in each and every day, uh, learning new things is what I'm doing right now. And it's been, it's been good. And then just one more quick one for me. Um, Jamie Collins obviously switched numbers, uh, leaving that 58 open for you. You wore that in high school, you wore it in college. Is, is there any significance to that number for you? Yeah, so uh, my dad, he, was, uh, he wore that number when he was in high school and on the island uh, playing for a golf high school. And uh, I just kind of saw one one of his pictures, his old pictures back when uh, he had he was like the only person on the field with like a tinted visor, and uh, and I was like, oh, <laughs> Pops got some swag on the island. I don't even know how you got that back then. So uh, to see him wear that number, I wanted to really carry on his legacy and kind of carry out the dream that we both had, and uh, that's what I want to do with 58. And I'm glad that he switched numbers. And uh, if he didn't, I was gonna try to <laughs> persuade some uh, somewhat of uh, to get that number, but yeah, I'm glad I got 58. Appreciate you. Dave Burkett. So that's where you get the swag from, huh? Because offensive linemen don't usually come with it. You get it from dad? Yeah, I, I say a little bit. Uh, I try my best to uh, look <laughs> good out there. It makes me, I guess, play better. <laughs> right, hey, look good, feel good, right? Feel good, play good, play good, pay oh, good. Feel exactly. Good. Uh, well, can you spell the name of the high school you said that your dad played for? Can you spell that? T A F U N A, Gafunga. Okay. Um, how are you feeling since obviously you missed that that time with COVID? Oh, I'm feeling good now. Uh, being out here in a couple of days and kind of getting that ramp up here to really recover from all that has been wonderful. Uh, being on the field really helps a lot because it kind of creates a different uh, vibe for me that I'm I get to be out there with the guys and play the sport that I love and be around all them too and to create that chemistry uh, to build to something special. So uh, to be out there with them and to run around and have fun playing the sport that I sat out for way too long. And uh, it, again, it's something that I love to do and love to be here. Can you, um, I got this question from a couple of fans and I didn't have an answer. So I just wanted to ask you straight up, you know, you opted out of last season, obviously the COVID stuff was going on. Um, then you contracted COVID. I don't know if you didn't get the vaccine. If you did, maybe you can tell us, or if you weren't planning on it, whatever. But some people just didn't think those two jived, right? That you sat out a season because of whatever COVID concerns you may have had, and then you contracted it. So I don't know. How do you, can you explain that a little bit, I guess? I mean, to be honest, the world happens in many different ways, and I can't control the, any of that. And I can control uh, my environment and what's around me and what. Uh, again, what I can control. And those are one of those things that wasn't in my control and uh, just took it how it was. Uh, I, I go live my day day by day. I don't really look at anything else, so. Was the opt out though, was that due to concerns of, about COVID or due to the season of the Pac-12? You know, See, yeah, uh, people get that mixed up. Uh, the reason why I ultimately opted out was because Pac-12 canceled the season. And from there on, I didn't know what was going on. And uh, that was the reason. Okay, just wanted to be clear on that. And then just um, very last thing, um, I don't know, you know, since you're around some of these vets, you know, Decker, Ragnar, these guys, have you already been that, you know, 
guy in their pocket trying to learn everything. Can you just explain, you know, how much of a sponge you're, you're trying to be? Um, they're just doing their thing. Uh, I just want to be in their almost their shadow uh, type of uh, vibe and uh, don't want to get in their way because at the end of the day, they they uh, have to do what they have to do. And uh, I just I just watch. That's all I do. And I observe every every little thing that they do and everything that they uh, do to prepare everything that they do on the field that helps them succeed at the blocks they do and so on and so forth. So thank you for that. Last one, Michael here. Yeah, for now, um, it seems pretty simple, you know, switching positions left to right. Is it that easy? And, and how have you done it so far? It is not that easy. Uh, I don't think so. It is, but man, it's a whole different feel. Again, it's like, let's say uh, I'm right-handed. So I've been writing right-handed my whole life. And then one day you just ask to write your full name left-handed at full speed, the same speed that you write with your right hand. So yeah, it's a little bit of adjustment. But again, I love a challenge and it's something that I'm looking forward to. And uh, again, it takes me back to my high school days and uh, looking forward to to grow in that position. Okay, and one last one here. This, this goes back to your high school days. Hank Fraley was in an interview uh, talking to us last week, I think it was. And he talked about how he, how he uh, saw you play in high school when he was recruiting you for UCLA. Yeah. I wonder if you remember that and any exchange you might've had with him and what it's like to sort of be, I'm sure you got recruited by a lot of schools. But just if you remember Hank at all. Yeah, no, I remember that day uh, a lot. The day, sorry, the day he came to my high school game in, uh, against Pine View at Pine View. It wasn't even a home game. So uh, he, he was out there. Uh, didn't know the whole NCAA rule, so it was not that much contact. I didn't know if I could go up to him and speak to him and didn't know all that. So kind of just kind of stayed a distance. But yeah, I remember him being there and then uh, actually getting in a fight at halftime or a little uh, scuffle at halftime. And then right then and there, he, uh, he left. And then, uh, but yeah, I uh, remember him. He was the, per he was the one, one of the coaches that came in late to the recruiting process for myself. So uh, it was kind of hard for him to kind of really persuade me to go to the school that he was coaching for. So, but yeah, I remember him through the, throughout the process. All right, cool. Thanks a lot, man. Yep. All right. Thanks, Panay. Thanks everyone. We appreciate your patience. Have a good holiday weekend. Thanks, Thank you.